All right. Welcome to this live stream. If you're watching from YouTube, it is great to have you. I do apologize as I'm still trying to set things up. I've been rushing, uh, rushing a bit to get to the live. And uh, yeah, so let me just put on some light here with the ring light. There it is. Great. All right. Great to have you. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome to this video. If you're watching from YouTube, it is great to have you. And um, yeah, we're going to spend some time in God's Word tonight. We're going to read the last chapter in the book of Acts, which is Acts chapter 28. And then we will take it from there. Praise God. Praise God. Last night I was not able to go live. We had an unexpected power outage. But thankfully that tonight I can, even though I'm late. Donovan, welcome to the live, man. Thanks for that heart me gift, bro. I appreciate that. Um, Donovan, how are you doing, man? And welcome to all those who have also just joined in. Praise God, guys. Yeah, so I'm not going to waste too much time tonight. We're going to pray pretty soon and then get into uh, the Word. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm well, thank you, Donovan. How are you doing, man? Yeah, it's good to be back again tonight. Missed you guys last night. Missed going live last night. Melissa, welcome. Welcome, guys and girls, with those who have just joined in. Ayesha, welcome. Thanks for the follow there, Melissa. I appreciate that. God bless. Yeah, so give it a couple minutes and then we're going to open up in prayer and get into God's Word. Um, and then I believe from tomorrow we're going to, yeah, we're going to read in a different book from tomorrow. So we'll have confirmation on what book we're going to read tomorrow. Crazy thing is, actually, what has happened is that every time uh, we go to another book in the Bible, it's purely led by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to just read whatever i just want to read to you guys we read run uh we we uh read yeah one chapter a night one chapter a night used to be like three to four chapters a night but um yeah anyway greg welcome to the live chad i see you in the live how you doing chad welcome welcome back um joseline welcome thanks joseline for subscribing to my youtube channel i saw that you did that today i appreciate that uh Charlene, welcome to the live Hey, Chad. Great having you, man. Awesome. So like I said, guys, we're going to open up in prayer and get started with God's Word. As I'm quite late tonight, I was working on uh, posting a video, but, you know, it takes time. It takes time and I, yeah, completely just ran out of time. Uh, it took me like more than an hour to really plan and make a video. <laughs> Thanks for the cheer you up gift there, Charlene. Appreciate that. And thank you, Dan Pillay, 71, for the follow. All right, guys, let's give this time to God right now. Let's open up in prayer. Thank you, Charlene, for that heart mean gift there. I appreciate that. Heavenly Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we spend time in your word, I pray that you would teach us. And by you, Holy Spirit, that you would bring us to our hearts, revelation, wisdom, and understanding from your word. Now, thank you, Father God, for doing what you want to do on this love, that you would have your way on this love. And thank you, Jesus, for your presence here today. I invite you, Lord Jesus, to be a part of this live stream and, and teach us your ways. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak through me. And I give you, Father God, all the glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Awesome. Welcome, guys, to those who recently just joined in. We're going to do some Bible reading now. Richard, I'll see you on the live. Welcome. Asphalt, it's good in a way to have, a fear, to have the fear of the Lord. But we mustn't be afraid of God in the sense that we are not allowed to like approach him or we're not allowed to pray or that we're just so scared of him that we're scared to to do anything wrong that's not the way to live as god has not given us a spirit of fear but one of love power and a sound mind so the fear of god is different to uh, really being afraid of god the fear of god is more like 
uh, the reverent fear of God. You're showing reverence to the Father and you're really living in a way that you are careful to not hurt the heart of God by the way you live. And so, yeah. Um, but God bless you, Asphalt. And uh, Begs, welcome to the live. And uh, B-Way, blessing, welcome. Mark, if you're still in the live, God bless you. Thanks for popping in. And so, yeah, guys, we're going to read Acts 28. This is the last chapter in the book of Acts. And then we're going to go to a different book from tomorrow night. Um, God bless you too, user 961. Uh, Cynthia, welcome to the live. Often struggle with anxiety. One awesome, straightforward scripture verse for anxiety that you can always go to is Philippians 4 and verse 6, where it says, Be anxious for nothing. And so, uh, also says, With uh, thanksgiving and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Um, so, yeah, um, definitely meditate on God's word when you're feeling anxiety. Uh, creep into your life so also what you can do is really understand that you've been given power and authority over the enemy by the name of Jesus so you can actually at any given time take authority by the power of the name of Jesus and and talk to that anxiety and tell it to go in the name of Jesus and it has to flee also if you stand on James 4 verse 7 which says if you submit to God and then resist the devil, he will flee from you. So resist the God, uh, resist the God of this world. Yes, of course. <laughs> submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Amen. The three months of, I live with Jeremiah 17 verse 7 to 10. That's awesome, Melissa. And to find a scripture verse that you can stand on is also so powerful. One of the scripture verses that I've been standing on is Philipp, uh, not Philippians, yeah, also Philippians a couple verses in there but um more specifically isaiah 40 verse 31 which says seek first not seek first that's your uh, that's matthew 6 33 sorry uh isaiah 40 and verse 31 says those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint so that's one of the scripture verses that have kept me going that have that has increased my hope and also Jeremiah 29 11 um, you know uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 there's so many verses that you can really meditate on memorize and speak over your life and that's how it really brings change for the better into your life let me just bring this chair up a little bit more okay so we're going to get into the Word of God now and then. I'm going to just put the comment section off so that we can focus on God's Word. Um, what anxiety? Thought anxiety coming from the enemy and depression. It definitely is from the enemy, of course. But yeah, some people unfortunately struggle with anxiety. And myself too, sometimes feel anxious about life or whatever. But then... That's really when we got to take that thought captive, take every thought captive and speak the word of God over your life. Amen. So, yeah, amen. God saved by God from anxiety and depression. That's awesome, Begs, and that is awesome. Praise God. Jordan, welcome, man. Thank you for that awesome finger heart. Not finger heart, heart me gift. What is with my words tonight, guys? <laughs> that does not look right. <laughs> my bad. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to put the comments off so we can just chill for a second and so we can focus on the Word of God. I'm just going to read one chapter tonight. It's going to be Acts chapter 28. It's the last chapter in the book of Acts. So let's read that. Let's focus on God's word right now and then we will uh, put the comment section back on so we can focus on prayer requests, chats, Q&As and all that. Amen. So I'm just going to drop this one level down. There it is. So praise God. Acts chapter 28 guys from the New King James Version. Okay, now when they had escaped, 
they then found out that the island was called Malta. But let's just backtrack a bit quickly, go back to what was read in chapter 27. We read about um, kind of like a shipwreck, these uh, prisoners and the, I think it was the centurions, but there were people on this uh, ship and they escaped the ship, not, not escaped the ship, escaped danger pretty much by jumping overboard and swimming to uh, the shore um, and now they've landed on an island called Malta okay so you get the idea and the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled the fire and made us all welcome because uh, because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So we can see that there was an attack. A snake, a viper came out of this fire. It was obviously uh, in there. And then because of the heat, the, the viper came out. Thanks for that heart me gift there, Philly. So now we see that Paul is being attacked and perhaps he got bitten because the snake fastened on his hand. So in other translations, I would say it said that the snake bit him. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, how else would a snake hang from someone's hand obviously it was biting Paul's hand a poisonous snake a viper they said to one another no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea yet justice does not allow to live now obviously these natives don't know what's going on don't know who these people are and they just making assumptions that Paul is a murderer and now that justice does not allow him to live because a snake is literally in the process of biting him. Fully thanks for the roses there. Okay, verse 5. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Why did he not die? Why didn't he suffer any harm? Let's continue to read. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. So obviously they saw something very unusual. They saw something supernatural and they didn't even know about it. Um, so Paul was not affected even though a poisonous snake bit him on the hand. Very interesting. Very cool. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, or Publius, hope I'm saying that right, or Publius, or Publi uh, Publius, quite an interesting name, do forgive me guys, actually let's just take this time to pronounce this name correctly guys, could be Publius, could be Publius, uh, so let me just quickly quick, uh, get the pronunciation of this, okay? Could be Publius, could be Publius. I really don't want to do anything else until we we do this. Let me just get this 15 second ad finished with. Gotta love the 15 second unskippable ads. Okay, let's pause that. Publius. Publius, alright. Sorry about that. Publius. <laughs> it's amazing what you learn when you join a Bible reading love. <laughs> anyway, Publius. Very interesting name. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, who received us as entertained and entertained us court, uh, courteously for three days. And it happened 
that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went in to him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when he was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. So they honored, sorry, they also honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. After three months, we sailed in an exo- uh, in an exalic. <laughs> what are my words tonight, guys? Oh my goodness. After three months, we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers, which had wintered, wintered, withered, yeah, wintered, right, which had wintered at the island. And landing at Sarah Cruz, we stayed there three days. From there, we circled around and reached Regium. After... And after one day, the south wind blew, and the next day we came to Petioli. Petioli. Putioli. Interesting word as well. Where we found brethren and were invited to stay with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Appi or Appi Forum and three inns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. Now, when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him. And it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they had examined me, wanted to let me go, because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, so that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. Sorry, not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. Verse 20. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Then they said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think, for concerning this sect we know that it is spoken against everywhere. So when they had appointed him a day, Many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets, from morning till evening. Let me just grab another sip of water quickly, guys. And by the way, uh, when you guys tap the screen, it allows the live to get more exposure on the for you page and all that so when you tap the screen you are bringing more people in to hear the word of god guys so thank you for doing that and i encourage you to keep tapping the screen you don't have to but definitely helps bringing in people for the word of god amen some nights i just get really thirsty and okay this is verse 24 And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. Now let's pause there for a second and notice that this same thing that is happening in this um, portion of of the Bible is still happening in this day and age. We see that there are people who, when they hear the gospel, choose to believe, and there are people who hear the gospel and choose to disbelieve or choose to not believe. 
And this happened back then in, in, in the times of the Bible. Some were persuaded by the things which were spoken and some disbelieved. It's unfortunate, but that is just how it is. That is how it was and that's how it is today. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul and said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Now there are people that I even converse with to this day that are like these people that choose to disbelieve. They choose to reject. So um, there are those people out there. Their hearts have grown dull, unfortunately. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Amen. Praise God. So that is the end of the book of Acts, guys. And tomorrow we're going to read from another book in the Bible, I believe from the book of Matthew. That's what's been on my heart. I thought about going to read First and Second Corinthians, but I feel like um, Matthew is on my heart to go through again. And uh, we'll see after Matthew what the Holy Spirit wants us to receive, wants us to read. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Holy Spirit. Awesome. That is Bible reading for this evening, guys. I hope some of you got something out of that. Um, I'm going to put the comments back on right now, guys. So just give me a second. There it is. If you guys now have any comments... You want to put in regarding prayer requests, regarding a question, then feel free to put that in the chat. Jordan, thanks for the roses, bro. Praise God, guys. Amen. Joseline, thank you for that finger heart. I hope I'm saying your name right, by the way. Is it Joseline? I think it is. Jackie, I see you on the live. Thank you for the likes there. I appreciate that. And everyone else who's joined in, and praise God for his word tonight, guys. Um... I hope some of you got something out of it. I definitely did. So, praise God. Awesome. Okay, thank you, Jocelyn. I think I do know how to say your name then. Yeah, glory to God begs for His word. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go live last night for those who perhaps wanted to join um, there was an unexpected power outage. I think there were stolen cables or uh, damaged cables in the electric boxes in the area. And they had to fix it, had to repair it. It only came on earlier this morning. So we had no electricity for the rest of the night. Samir, welcome to the live. But seriously, guys, if you need prayer in any way, feel free to put any, any prayer request in the chat. I'm not only here to pray for you, I believe there are others, especially my moderators on the love, who are also there to stand in the gap in prayer for you guys so that we can love on each other, pray for each other with unity. As we join together, we put our faith together. And the Bible says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, he will heal the land. Um, and that's, of course, referring to healing the land and all that. But it also has power with us uh, uniting together, as it is also said in the book of Acts that uh, at a time Paul 
prayed with them all. He prayed together with the people. And there's power in that. Amen. Glory to God. Guys, I don't know what's going on tonight. I'm very, very thirsty. Uh, yesterday I had a dream, a voice telling me, stand firm, O oh, Israel. Don't, what that really meant. So, that's interesting, sorry that you had that dream. Also, like whenever you have these dreams, especially when you feel like they are vivid dreams, always take them to God and, and pray that God would give you confirmation of the meaning and the interpretation of that dream. Uh, God bless you, brother. Thanks. God bless you too. Amen. Learning and sharing. I like that username. And thanks for sharing the live there, Jackie. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. Glory to God, guys. And um, So, I've recently posted a video. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have too much time to spend on making the video. So, it was kind of out of focus at times. I had to crank the sharpness up all the way to 50%, which is way too much um, sharpen and, and because it was kind of out of focus because I was rushing to make the video but I really had a video on my heart to make like I just felt like I really needed to do that and I think that's so um, important and powerful when we act in obedience when the Holy Spirit speaks to us so it's so important to go ahead and do that um, name a car for an edit Toyota Supra Mark IV it's, it's pretty much my dream car, so, um, yeah, <laughs> Quinton, how's it going, man, welcome to the live, bro, and so, let me see here, guys, okay, uh, please pray for me, uh, I would like to uh, continue having faith like Paul, and have strong faith in God, that's an awesome prayer request you have, Begs, and guys, I want us all together to pray for Begs, as she's trusting God for an increase of faith in her life, Thank you, Father God, for your word. As you, your word says, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I pray, Father God, that you would bring to Bex revelation of your word and, an, and a hunger to seek you through your word, that her faith will be increased. I pray, Father God, for the gift of faith for Bex in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Biggs. Just receive that in Jesus' name. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God, Nita. Uh, doing construction work right now and staple the pipe by accident. You'll pray. It's an easy fix. Oh, that's hectic, Jordan. I just hope and pray that comes right, man. Yeah. Um, that's hectic, man. Amen. Yeah, glory to God, Bex. It's such a such a good thing to uh, seek faith because the more faith you have, the more unstoppable as a warrior of Christ you are really. So an increase in faith is really such a key point in living a life for Christ effectively. Being strong in the Lord. So also the more faith you have, the less fear you will have. Because think about it. If you really have ultimate faith in God, if you believe everything that is written in the Bible, what happens is that you, your body, your spirit, your soul comes into alignment with God's word, which says, for example, in Psalm 23 and verse 4, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So by you meditating on God's word, putting it in your heart and speaking it, you will come into alignment with God's word that when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when you feel like you're going through troublesome times and you, you feel like fear is really trying to creep into your life, you feel like worry is really trying to creep into your life, that's when you speak the word of God and you believe in it. As you speak it, as you proclaim it over your life, 
I've seen that happen in my life and that has helped me overcome fear. Praise God. Amen. God bless you too. Tina, welcome to this live. Um, yeah, glory to God. Awesome stuff, guys. And good job tapping the screen as well, guys. Thank you for, for the likes. Um, George, uh, I see you in the house, brother. Let me just check something real quickly, man. Sorry, I didn't mean to send you an invite, George. I do apologize. I didn't mean to send you an invite. But yes, okay, George. Uh, I've been watching your videos every single day on TikTok. And I see that you're doing a challenge, a 100-day challenge, 100-day worship challenge, which is really cool. I want you guys to check out I am George uh, Sedders. I'm an, I am George Sedders. Go check his account out. Um, he's doing. A, uh, he's got a, an amazing voice from God, and he does uh, one worship song a day, and he's doing it for 100 days, which is pretty cool. I think he's almost on 50 now, somewhere around 50. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing to see. Jordan, I had a prayer request you missed. I do apologize for missing that, Charlene, but to my knowledge and to my observations, I'm not able to see that specific prayer request. Charlene, do please let me know what that prayer request was as it didn't come through. I didn't see any prayer request from you, unfortunately. It, yeah, I don't know why it didn't come through. I'm looking again to just double check. But I didn't see it. Exactly, it's what I have been working on in myself lately with learning about Jesus' love. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. And thank you for the follows there, guys. Appreciate that. So there it is. Amen. Yeah, guys. Um, when you read the Word of God, not only your faith increases, but there's a real change of heart. There's a real transformation because from reading the Bible in 2021, uh, Josephine, thank you for the rose. 2021 and 2022, reading the Bible back to back was absolutely life changing. It transformed my life. The Bible says that you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, my mind and each and every one of our minds need renewing. And the way we are renewed is by the word of God. Amen. Thank you for all the likes, guys. I see we've got over 10,000 likes. That went up pretty quickly. Good job tapping the screen, guys. Thank you so much, Jordan. You're doing an incredible things here. Uh, doing incredible things here for the Lord our God. Amen. George, thank you. Thank you for that, George. I'm just going to pin George, guys. Make sure to follow him. And um, he's a... Uh, He's got an amazing TikTok account that he does worship on and mostly worship, but yeah, it's really cool. And I've known him actually, I think, for years on TikTok. So I've we've been following each other for quite some time. Jordan, can uh, you can also say your prayer requests. We pray for you too. Thank you, Suri. I appreciate that too. And I'm by no means perfect in any way. I also appreciate prayer. So yeah, all I would say is pray that... My faith holds strong. Pray that um, I become stronger with my spiritual walk with Christ. I would say there's definitely something that I can definitely get better at is, is being strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You see, it's by the Holy Spirit that we overcome the problems in life. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that we overcome sin. Because, of course, as the Bible says, Jesus said, uh, the flesh is weak and the spirit is willing. So, of course, the flesh is always wanting to go here, wanting to go there, wanting to do this and wanting to do that. But what uh, what you've got to do is um, uh, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. That's literally what Jesus said after he was praying. And he came and he saw them sleeping. He saw the disciples sleeping. And, and he said, can you not stay awake for an hour? And then he said, watch and pray so you don't fall into temptation. Um, Charlene, I'm still not 
receiving your prayer request i'm so sorry that it's not coming through if you want to uh, privately send me a prayer request on whatsapp and then i'll get i'll catch the message on whatsapp and then i will um uh, pray for you when i see what prayer request it is and then i'll pray for you on the live um yeah sorry it seems like some of the messages they don't come through Edgar from Argentina. God bless you. Oh, thanks for that, Edgar. God bless you too. That's cool to to hear where you're watching from. Argentina is quite quite a long way from here. Um, so that's amazing. Very cool. And it's amazing, guys. Like over the years, we've had people all over the world join this live. Um, it's really cool. And and that's just the whole amazing point of spreading the gospel not just like on the streets not with people in uh the public but on social media you can connect with people all over the world and what's nice is that you don't even have to say much like sometimes when you're talking to people you want to persuade them you want to get them to see the truth so you you take time to talk to them but it's not only me making videos and posting them on on tiktok one minute videos or whatever but there are so many other Christian TikTokers out there posting content that's popping up on people's pages. Like, for example, Timothy Bruce. He's a Christian content creator. He speaks the word of God. He preaches uh, the gospel every single day almost, it seems like. He posts like a few videos a day, it seems like. And he's got 1.5 million followers on TikTok. So I think Christianity and the gospel is being more popular is becoming more popular today and a lot more people are seeing the truth because of revival that's happening in this world and a lot of people will say yeah that's because we are we are heading to the end times and indeed we are the end times are are closer than it's ever been before of course uh, and jesus is coming back soon of course we don't know when no one knows when we can't say when only God the Father knows when the the exact time is. But um, all we got to do is follow God, follow His Word, and build our relationship with Jesus. Yeah, okay, let's read Proverbs 21 verse 19. Yeah, let's go and read that. Just going to search it on my PC. Proverbs 21. Okay. Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. That's quite random, but quite interesting and important indeed. I think also what the Bible says is that uh, uh, something about uh, a some uh, uh, con contemptuous wife is like a constant dripping or uh, something wife is like a constant dripping let's actually search it up um, it's God it's God's first before everything else God first before family and friends God first in love yes 100% begs I love that you said that and there's a scripture verse that goes in line with that that talks about how Jesus said if you will leave your father and mother, husband or wife, and children for my sake, or children for my sake, you will not lose your reward, I think it is. Let me just double check on that as well. But let me see here. Uh, see what uh, verse it is proverbs 27 15 to 16 that's what i want to check okay so it says a continual dripping on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand so what is contentious 
let's see the Google definition for contentious. And then we're going to check out that other scripture verse um, when putting God first. Okay. Causing or likely to cause an argument. Okay. Involving heated argument. So obviously an argumentative woman is like a constant dripping. It's, it's, it's quite annoying in other words. And that's why um, don't pay yourself with the wrong person. The Bible also says that we should not be unequally yoked. Light angel, thank you for that rose. So yeah, let's check out the other scripture verse that talks about that if we leave father and mother, brother or sister, wife or children. Um, Luke 14, 26, I think it is. So let's check out Luke 14, 26. Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, cannot be my disciple. So I think there's also another scripture verse that, that talks about this, but this is also very important and quite the point um, on how we should put Jesus first is that it's not saying that we should hate um, literally hate like your own life and, and hate other people's lives. Don't take it out of context because what it's really saying is that if you are willing to be a disciple of Jesus, that you will drop everything for him. That means that you can be his disciple. But if you are holding on to things in life. For example, if you have a wife, as a man, if you have a wife and your wife doesn't want you to preach the gospel and you say, okay, to make you happy, I will not preach the gospel. That is a great example to use because then you wouldn't become a disciple of Jesus because you're literally loving someone else more than Jesus. Now, if you say this instead, I'm sorry, but I'm going to honor the Lord Jesus and I'm going to go and preach the gospel whether you want me to or not. And then you're honoring the Lord Jesus. So in that case, it mentions if you uh, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Why does it say your life also? It says because you have your own desires, you have your own wants. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you cannot say that I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to please my flesh and I'm going to... Uh, go where I want to go based on my own ideas, then you cannot be a disciple of Jesus. But if you're willing to give up everything for Jesus, that's really when you're, you're able to become his disciple. Amen. There's also another scripture verse. Um, so it's Matthew 19 verse 29. That's also what I wanted. This is more specifically what I wanted to read to you guys. Matthew 19, 29. see what that says and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life see that shows you the importance of really dedicating your life to Christ and and how amazing and powerful it really is amen anyway Amen. The right woman will bring you peace. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. Please pray for my peace of mind. I don't want to be angry anymore at the people who hurt me all the time. That's very, very good you ask for that um, as a prayer request because, uh, you know, there are sometimes enemies around us. 
and they are people against us and and the bible says love your enemies and we cannot effectively love someone else without the love of christ in us so we need to sometimes just go down on our knees before jesus sit at the feet of jesus in other words and spend time with him that really allows all the anger to melt away uh, that's also such a powerful thing but thank you father god for uh, heavenly jd i just pray father god in jesus name for this person to be healed from any trauma from any anger and i command all anger to be loosed from this person's soul and joy and love to be bound together with this person's heart and soul in jesus name amen god bless you yes pray for peace thank you father god for peace to rest upon all those watching this right now in jesus name amen maureen welcome to the love amen glory to god amen really bad cutting in and out for me right now oh sorry chad yeah i think it was a bit laggy for me as well uh, from our end it seemed a bit laggy no worries chad god bless we'll chat soon amen praise god um sorry what is your name is your name jd how do you love your enemies while they treat you like a doormat very good question begs and this is obviously uh, for everyone to listen up the way we love our enemies the way we are able to love our enemies is because we are not in the way of ourselves we have given our lives to christ we have become a slave to righteousness and not a slave to ourselves not a slave to our not a slave to sin so when we are a slave to righteousness when we take up the yoke and burden of jesus jesus said take up my yoke and burden for my burden is light and my yoke is easy thanks for the finger hearts there maureen um so when you do that you get out of the way and it's by the power of christ in you that you are able to love it's by the power of the holy spirit that you are able to love those who treat you like a doormat who treat you badly um your relationship with jesus reveals how you will treat people so it's very important that um thank you maureen for all the gifts i appreciate all the the gifts all the support to the love um yeah but uh, there it is guys you know our relationship with jesus and our knowledge of the word of god is so important and also really what it goes down to having the fear of god it's the beginning of wisdom so and knowledge of the holy one is understanding so uh, if you want to be able to effectively love people the way you should also pray for wisdom pray and ask god for wisdom seek wisdom and when you have wisdom you will have truth when you have truth it sets you free because you no longer are bound to get angry or get irritated at someone i mean there was a guy literally today that drove through a red robot as i was crossing the street he drove through a red robot and he almost hit me i had to walk a little faster to get out of the way this guy went through a straight red robot and instantly i was annoyed i was like yo what's going on you know why are you driving through a red robot but moments later i was reminded of the importance of forgiveness reminded of the importance of love and i immediately had to make a decision am i going to hold the grudge against this person who drove through a red robot and almost knocked me over and killed me am i gonna uh, have unforgiveness towards this person am i gonna have hate towards this person am i gonna curse this person for doing this and almost killing me or am i going to act like jesus teaches me to act through the bible and say i forgive you and i love you so i had to make a decision of course and 
with being fed the word of God on a daily basis, with with years of filling your heart with the word of God, you have this wisdom. Also, obviously, by seeking God for wisdom, you have this wisdom, this knowledge of of right and wrong. To you know what to do in every situation, and so then and there. I knew the right thing to do was to forgive. So I said, I forgive him. I forgive him. And I move on. And guess what? I felt at peace. I felt great after that. I didn't feel anything against that person anymore because I forgave them. And that's the secret. When we have the courage and the boldness through the power of the Holy Spirit to effectively do the right thing and and forgive someone when you when you really need to when it's the the most difficult time to do it when you're able to do that there's immediate effect actually there's something that happens immediately when you forgive someone you are released from hate you are released from a grudge you are released from having bitterness you are released from anger so it's very important. Uh, Dave, thanks for the follow there. Uh, Charlene, I still haven't seen any prayer requests come through uh, from you. So I'm sorry that uh, that I didn't see it. I still haven't seen it. If you still want to put it in the chat, you can maybe try to reword it or yeah, word it in a different way. Maureen, thank you for all the roses there. Um, so dave you know there's a lot of questions people can ask there's a lot of uh mysteries and that is also why we need wisdom wow thank you maureen 93 roses so this is why we also need wisdom is that when we see things happening we are not quick to blame god are we not quick to tell say that the Bible's not true and say that there's no God because how can a loving God cause suffering and this and that and blah, 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 blah. But we, we have wisdom of the truth. We say, okay, well, Satan is the God of this world currently. Why is he the God of this world? Because he fell from heaven and he's against God. He's the enemy. So there's a set time for Satan in the lake of fire and, and that's his destiny. That is his fate, the lake of fire. Now, Satan knows where he's going to go. Why is he able to, to cause havoc on the earth? I believe the reason for that is partly because he is almost like a sifter. He's almost like sifting. And, and, and it's almost like... God allows certain attacks from Satan. As we also read in the book of Job, God allowed Satan to attack Job. It sounds ludicrous. It sounds crazy. It sounds evil. But there's a reason. There's a very valid, just reason behind why Satan is allowed to uh, prowl around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Because also, you know, God wants to show Satan that his people, human beings, mere mortals, who have Jesus, is greater. Jesus is greater who is in us than he that is in the world. So, in fact, us as Christians, even though Satan might be regarded as, as the God of this world, and of course, don't be mistaken, God is going to destroy this world. God is going to destroy this world and make a whole new earth. Okay, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, of course. So, we have been given power and authority over the enemy, over Satan. Because of Jesus, great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So now, we have this wisdom, this revelation of the fact that Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus came that there may be life and life more abundantly amen so that is the whole difference is that we have power and authority in christ jesus over the enemy so regardless of what the enemy thinks he is doing we stand above that and we don't submit ourselves under the enemy 
The enemy is under our feet. God has called us to rule and reign as kings and priests on this earth, not attached to this world, not attached to worldly things, but to fulfill the will and the call of God of our lives on this time on earth. So we, our time on earth is, is, is a, an assignment. We all have an assignment. We all have a job to do. And you can live how you want. You can work in whatever job you want. You can live a beautiful, wonderful life. And even if you want to retire, that's amazing. Do that, okay? But here's the important thing. Don't let your whole life be a waste and not understand at the end of the day that you could have done so much more for God while you still had time on the earth. So get to know who God is. Fill your heart with the Word of God on a daily basis. Fill your heart with Christ and then you will start to discover wisdom you'll start to bring heaven down to earth because whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven so yeah um, this revelation of why we are here this revelation of our very existence on this earth will show you your purpose will show you your calling that your calling isn't for you to be rich your calling isn't for you to have a beautiful wonderful luxurious amazing life your calling is to serve others your calling is for the kingdom of god your rest is found in eternity your your rest is found in god it's not found in this world do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal so it's important this wisdom this revelation we can gather amen how long have you ever been in the dark of the soul a desert period um, at times it varies, you know, you go through seasons of wilderness, um, you know, pretty much I would say for the last 20 years or so, my whole family and I have actually been going through quite a wilderness with a lot of, um, how can I say, a lot of character building seasons and a lot of ups and downs, but not exactly fully restored yet. And I know God will restore in his time in his time he will make it happen but there's been quite a wilderness that we've had to go through as a family but the really cool thing about this is that the wilderness that we go through now doesn't affect us as it would 10 years ago 10 years ago if we went through the stuff we went through today we would panic more we would complain more we would worry more and it just shows you what god has done for you by you accepting the wilderness accepting the the season of character building the season of uh, discipline and god has pruned you god has refined you into being a vessel for him because now our uh, desires and our wants have been more set on god on his will instead of being set on what we want to do and our own ideas so there's a reason why God takes us through seasons of a desert, seasons of a wilderness. And we can go in depth with it on another day. But yeah, it's okay, Jordan. I mentioned I'll message you on the live. After the live. Okay, no problem, Charlene. Uh, Kiara, welcome to the live. How are you doing? Yeah, praise God. Uh, blessed night to everyone. Let's meet tomorrow. I'm super tired today. Love you all. God bless you, Suri. Much love back to you and thanks for being on the live. I'm also going to be wrapping things up pretty soon. I'm going to also say a prayer for you guys before I end this live if you want to wait for that. Jesus loves you too. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Jordan, thank you for the loves, helping us to learn more, sharing the word together. Yeah, praise God for that, Suri. Thank you for your comment. Um, yeah, Jesus was Jewish on the earth in his physical form, pretty much, I would say. Uh, 
Maureen, glory, hallelujah, amen, amen, I had to learn that the hard way, yeah, Jackie, I mean, definitely some of the things in life, we tend to not want to learn the easy way, and sometimes we do have to go the long route on learning something, but it's it's for the best at the end of the day, and as long as you get through that, you will have learned what you needed to learn, of course, so praise God for that, amen, and um is there any possibility that the earth is flat according to the Bible? You've studied it. Rocco, good question. And I know a lot of people who believe in the Bible say that the earth is flat, but I'm not like that. I'm very interested in, in a space. Space for me fascinates me. The cosmos, the planets, the solar system, the galaxies, the nebulas. I've even done a bit of astrophotography myself as as that was my passion when i had a a 250 millimeter lens for my old camera i used to have i i um took a picture of the Rhine nebula it's just my passion and so yes i'm definitely interested with space and i've done a lot of research myself also on youtube with regards to the planets and space and all that of course i don't like to listen to the junk that they talk about the big bang and all that so there's a lot that nasa say that i don't believe in but i do believe that the the moon landing did happen in fact as an astrophotographer myself and other astrophotographers around the world they've taken i personally haven't yet taken a picture of the iss but many people around the world have taken a picture of the iss which is the International Space Station. And there's clear video footage and uh, pictures from the ISS. And you can clearly see that the Earth is a lot more spherical than flat. Uh, so it is a sphere for the most part. The Earth is round. It's not, it's not flat to my knowledge. It's not flat to the way I understand it, especially when reading the Bible. I mean, even in the book of Job, it says the circle of the Earth. Now, obviously, many people might say when Job was talking about the Earth being a circle, you thought that might, it might be like a disc floating in space. But there is a real law of gravity. There, is a, there are real laws of physics that God created, um, such as gravity and, and so forth and so on. Um, so, yes, I believe that the earth is round. Um, and I believe the, the word of God would not support the fact that the earth is flat by any means from what I've read. I mean, not to brag in any way, but over 2021 and 2022, I had the privilege of taking time to read the entire Bible twice back to back. And I know that I'll learn a lot more reading it as I go, but reading the Bible a couple of times, I haven't really seen any indication that supports the fact of the earth being flat. So yeah, that's to answer your question. Anyway, but yeah, guys, I love that kind of stuff when we talk about that kind of stuff. But you still hear from the Lord in that wilderness. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the, the real revelation, the, re, the real wisdom behind why people don't hear the voice of God um, is because God wants to show us that we, when we don't hear him, we need to remain strong in continuing to trust him. God is actually testing us giving us these trials, giving us these uh, tests. He's, he's enabling our faith to grow. When he appears to be further away, he wants to see how much we've learned so that we ourselves can be pruned and faith be made whole so that when we don't hear or see God in our lives, we know that he's always there because his word says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So if you can keep in mind the truth of the Bible that says all God's promises are yes and amen. God is not a man that should lie. So of course it's impossible for God to lie. If God told you something from the Bible such as that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Why should you forget that? Why should you doubt God's word. So whether you feel God or not, it doesn't matter whether you feel God or not. He's always there. And there's a, there, there are valid reasons why you don't hear God. There's a, there are valid reasons why um, 
you don't see God working in your life in certain times is even when you spend more time with God and you feel like you're getting further from him what does that mean how how does that work out what's really I believe God allowing you to feel distant for a little period of time because you your faith is so strong at a point in time that that God he doesn't need to come to your rescue because you're already f- so faithful in him you're already so strong in the Lord that that he doesn't need to come to your rescue you have tapped into the wisdom of God and you've received the wisdom of God you've been changed by the wisdom of God and that you just keep on pers- persevering through life because of the strength of Christ in you but for those who are really struggling for those who have a broken heart the bible says god is close to the broken hearted now it doesn't mean that when you're really strong in your faith that you won't feel god of course you will experience god and and feel his presence when you are close to him and you are really strong in your your walk with god and strong in faith but it's almost like god Uh, wants to see how far we can go without feeling his presence how and and that really just builds our faith so I, I believe that everything that God does especially when you remain in God if you keep on trusting God and you keep on seeking him but you don't see anything happen it's not like something's wrong God is doing something behind the scenes God is moving when you don't even feel like he is he always does amen Thank you uh, for that, for those uh, finger hearts there, Cynthia, I appreciate that. God bless you, Begs. Yeah, I'm going to pray for you guys and then I'm going to head out. So, yeah, God bless you too, Daniel. Appreciate that. Is circle spherical? Um, not necessarily. Circle could be flat, but it also could be sphe- uh, spherical. So, I guess that um, Job's knowledge of the Bible was when he spoke about the earth being a circle he wasn't talking about it being flat i personally believe that yeah what's your view on genesis lit- uh, literal or symbolic uh depends really depends but i think everything that happened in genesis such as the flood such as the creation such as adam and eve and, and uh, cain and abel and seth and and all the generations from adam and eve like everything that happened in genesis i believe without a doubt did happen and is not symbolic but is literal but there may be certain literal references it depends uh, much love to you broski the lord has blessed us with your ministry our oh, glory to god fresh prince appreciate that message um so yeah uh he has separated me to one side right now and i'm not hearing him as much as before yeah so definitely in this time don't lose heart as the bible says in galatians 6 uh, 6 verse 9 uh, don't grow weary in doing good for in due season you will reap if you do not lose heart for me when i was desiring to have an encounter with jesus i was praying for an encounter with jesus and i kept on praying and kept on seeking god for i think more than a month it took me until i really had an encounter with jesus so you got to keep on trusting got to keep on seeking whether you feel god or not stay where you are in the time of prayer in your time of worship in your time of dedication to the work of god keep on doing good and fight the good fight of faith walk by faith and not by sight and then and then you will see god come through in the right time yeah rocco listen with with all like with all like due respect though i understand like there's possibilities out there based on what the bible says that people think the earth is flat but there is actual physical evidence nowadays all around us by nasa and all the probes and uh satellites that they've put into orbit i mean i literally was outside earlier this evening and i saw two satellites and you tell me like if the earth is flat why are we seeing physical photos of the earth being round so of course 
without even trying to get an answer out of the Bible, you can know and see for yourself that the earth is in fact round by the photos of the earth from space. Um, and perhaps maybe, you know, perhaps there are those people who believe that NASA is talking a bunch of nonsense and that we didn't go to the moon and that there's no international space station or whatever. But there is irrefutable evidence. I'm unfo unfortunately, for those flat earthers out there, there is irrefutable evidence of the earth being around. And a lot of people like, I don't like to refer to flat earthers as stupid, but it is silly thinking based on what the truth is but i don't regard them as stupid i'm not here to judge anyone if you're a flat earther you're still welcome to this live i appreciate you being here and i'm open to hearing from what you have to say about the earth being flat but then i'll also of course share what i know about the earth being round and and really i, I actually like to have conversations with flat earthers to have a conversation with them hear their side um, but then also uh, share with them the truth. Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of kind of those things that is quite literal. But yeah, where is your accent from? I'm from South Africa. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's a South African term. So yeah, so yeah means so yes because yeah is an Afrikaans word, which is a South African language, um, and yeah is spelt as J A and it means yes. So anyway, whenever I say ya, I mean yes. It's almost like a, a Dutch reference as well. It's like a, uh, in the Netherlands and, and in Germany and all that, they kind of use similar words. Anyway, like ya. <laughs> anyway, yes and amen. Thank you for uh, taking time to answer. Yeah, glory to God. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Amen, amen, amen. Yep, very true. Favorite Bible verse. Hmm, difficult to choose, but I really love Isaiah 40 verse 31. Also, one of my favorites is actually one of my favorites uh, is Matthew 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yo, Dilly Mello with that swan, bro. That is an amazing gift. Dilly Mello, thank you for that amazing gift. What? I did not expect that at all. Yo, Shout out to Dilly Mello, guys. Huge appreciation for that. That was amazing. Thank you for that. Anyway, praise God, guys. I'm going to just drop uh, you guys a prayer quickly. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to end the live pretty soon. Uh, same as Norwegian and Scandinavian. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they also say yeah. Very interesting. Uh, where do people go if they don't go to heaven? Good question. But yeah, um, I hate to see that username. That is very sad. There's a very, very real uh, place called heaven and very real place called hell. Um, of course, if you don't go to heaven, it's hell. Because heaven is everything outside of hell. Heaven is like literally not just like a little place out there in the universe. Heaven is literally the whole universe itself. It's like, like bigger than our galaxy. It's just like... It's the heavens. It's heaven. It's 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 God. So anyway, let me pray for you guys, and I want to pray for you guys. Now I'm going to be ending the live. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father God, I uh, thank you for this live stream, and I uh, thank you, Father God, for every person watching this live. I just pray that you'd bless each and every one of them, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for those who have chosen to sow into this ministry with their support, that you would bring them a hundredfold return on their seed that they've sown, Lord, and, and even more, abundant, abundantly above. Lord, I just pray for all those on this live, watching perhaps from YouTube, that you would just provide for their needs, Lord. If they need healing in their body, that you would just touch them through this prayer, and that you would bring a miracle into their lives, Lord. And perhaps they've felt far from you, Lord. Perhaps there are those who have felt like they've backslidden. But Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name, that you would speak to those who felt like they have, that you would let them know in their hearts, Father God, that it's not too late, that they can come back to you, Lord, and that you are just and faithful to forgive them, Father God. So we pray for your love to abound in their lives, Father God, and we pray, Holy Spirit, for your 
mighty power to flow through this love, throw, uh, uh, flow with your love and your fruit in their lives in Jesus' name. We bless your holy name, Father God, and we give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory to God, guys. Thank you guys for being on the live. Dilly Miller with uh, a heart me as well. Thanks for that, man. Thanks for the support to the live. And I appreciate all of you guys joining in. I'm going to be heading out, but I'll be back again tomorrow night for another uh, live stream and another Bible reading session. So... I will see you guys then. Be sure to join at around 8 p.m. South African Standard Time. Unless there's load shedding, I'll start at 7 p.m. Um, yeah, tonight I was quite late. God bless you too, Charlene. And thank you guys for joining. Appreciate you all. Much love to all of you. Thank you for all the love and support to the love. And all glory to God, guys, okay? Uh, yeah, glory to God. Maureen, thank you all for joining. Peace out, guys. Much love to all of you. And peace be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace.